one of the issues that has dominated discussions over the last five days of our summit is virtual assets and cryptocurrencies. And you've been a former regulator and an advisor to leading banks. What would you say are some of the challenges currently faced by regulators and by regulated entities when it comes to staying ahead of this rapid growth in virtual assets? Yes, Arvita, thank you for inviting me to this uh, summit. And uh, to begin with, virtual assets are something like uh, which raises the hackles of regulators all over the world because it is something you know is very easy, very difficult to track. It moves from uh, jurisdiction to jurisdiction, crosses across the borders, much like the coronavirus, without any boundaries. And it is used largely. What is of concern is that the FATF and other organizations have observed there has been a jump in transactions over 100% in 2021, probably due to the pandemic and uh, the kind of uh, fertile climate which is uh, afforded by that to enable, uh, enable criminals uh, do money laundering, terrorist financing using virtual SS channels. So how does this affect regulators? What can they do about it? Some jurisdictions have followed like uh, India did and which was set aside by the Supreme Court, banned virtual currencies, alert, did not allow banks to have anything to do with them, provide finance, in fact, squeeze the, uh, the air out of uh, the virtual currency market. But while it is banned, what happens is it thrives in the background. It goes in the background and it helps in the developing a very gray market, which is again, very dangerous to us. And as uh, the, G20 ministers conference in, uh, in Japan had put it. Today, virtual assets are not a threat to financial stability, but their role in money laundering, terrorist financing cannot be ruled out. And that is why you need to be ever vigilant on this front. And that is a concern which has been picked up also by the FATF in the 2019 when it revises guidelines, the recommendation 15 and recommendation 16 to include virtual assets and require that jurisdictions which are allowing virtual assets should have in place a system for, re for registering, regulating, and subjecting to the same AML controls as other forms of assets. And the recommendation 16 also uh, spoke of the advised on the travel rule. That is identifying both the, the, the tra transmitter and the recipient, the beneficiary of a transaction, particularly across the borders, which is again of significance to regulators. But how does it affect a, a country's financial stability? It could affect in various ways. One, what, what is of concern to the regulator is now that the virtual assets have picked up. There is a large market into it, which runs into trillions. In India, it is estimated to be over 2 billion. And we have industry experts also saying that it should be encouraged. But then what happens? If you allow a, uh, an unregulated market in virtual assets to thrive, it could pose a, a threat to your monetary policy. Fiat currency can be regulated subject to various monetary policy measures directed to appropriate sectors, which are a requirement of need. But if the same cannot be said of a market where you have absolutely no control and that could defeat your entire monetary policy exercise. Number two is because of these measures and because it could also be possible if it is unregulated for banks to use this as assets, lend against this, this could have implications uh, for banks, um, credit risk, operational risk, entire liquidity risk, the entire spectrum of risks. And this is because the huge volatility in crypto assets, today it may go up to $40,000. Tomorrow when Elon Musk says something, it can drop down to $28,000 because it is not pegged, unlike sta stable coins, which, is, which are pegged to a kind of an asset, whether it may be dollar, the pound, or it could be even gold. 